And at this point, it's it's weird. I, I remember being like, this is this is bizarre. How does someone start out the way M. Night did, making these like these classic films, incredible movies that are gonna stand the test of time? And on top of that, just get progressively worse? And it's it's kind of like you can track it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the special. Allow me to just change these titles before we jump right into it. It's going to be an expose of exposés, as I have promised. I don't know if every single one of you is a fan of the cinema, if you enjoy the movies. Uh, I believe it was Peep Show that had the joke. Yes, uh, that's a very, very unique question. I enjoy uh, ingesting carbon and turning it into energy, and I also enjoy film, as if it's just something that everyone talks about. Well, if you do like movies, you're probably very familiar with this gentleman you see before you, M. Night Shyamalan, the master of the twist, which is what he's very, very well known for. It's just, just these incredible twists. Um, his is a very unique story in the world of cinema. I'm not sure if you knew this, but he was actually coined as becoming the next Spielberg. And I will add, for good reason, it seemed like he was becoming the new master of the big budget blockbuster. The original film, something that is very rare in society today in a world of reboots, remakes, relaunches, re-re-re-re-ups, all those kind of things. He was a unique cinematic voice. And I discovered something else that is interesting. M. Night Shyamalan actually started out by making home movies, much like myself. You know, I come from a, a middle-class family that had a video recorder, a VCR. It was uh, I think it was a MIDI format that you could plug into a VCR. But me and my brother would uh, use it to make home movies all the time. And, uh, and he was no different. I am now going to present to you, for the first time ever, TM, uh, on the internet, the very first fight scene that M. Night Shyamalan ever created. It's quite epic. That's M. Night, and hold on, let's uh, get this a little louder, because we need to hear everything. Right here. Don't give it to him. I lose a brother. Don't worry about me. Get my brother first. Give me the money. Give my brother. Don't worry about me. Give me the money. Give me the money. Give me the money. Quickly. What kind of a knot is this? We're done. I don't like it. Come on. There's nothing. Give me the money. money. There's nothing in here. Oh, shit. The thing I love about this, oh, whoa, and also just the person getting smoked with one move. That's like, that's better than the one punch man. It's just like one cranium pushdown man. Uh, but also, when making home movies back in the day, I would have to, I would have to play the music on the side, you know? Yeah, one pushman. Nice. And... You got a friend doing claps behind the camera? Amazing. This is a pretty good fight sequence. Gotta say. Oh, Kubi, I have before. I've shown my old home videos. Oh, nice. Oh, no! Oh, no! This is pretty good. Pretty good. So, I'm sure none of you uh, have seen Praying with Anger. This was released in uh, 1992. Uh, this was the first full-length feature film by M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, not much to say about this because I have not seen it as well, so I can't talk uh, to this, but in most uh, Hollywood trajectories, you'll see there's usually a director doing maybe an indie film of some kind. They might start out with, say, a pie, and then that moves all the way into something uh, much more high budget. And so the pivot went from 1992, Praying with Anger, to 1998's Wide Awake, uh, another film I've never seen. And I'm sorry to say, probably don't intend on seeing. Uh, I mean, the trailer alone is kind of all I really needed to, to know. Remember grade school? 
when you had your best teacher, met your best friend. What do you think about her? She's okay. Pulled off your greatest pranks, faced your first bully. I can't. Why? Felt your first loss and found your first love. He's hot. I think I'm having a biological reaction. <laughs> Remember what it's like to experience life for the first time. Rosie O'Donnell, Dennis Leary, and Dana Delaney. That's not funny. Is that funny? Wide awake. So that was the second feature film by M. Night Shyamalan. Again, I, I don't really know much about it. In fact, let's say Wide Awake Rotten Tomatoes. Well, 45% of uh, critics did not enjoy, but 66% of the audience did. I mean, there's nothing more consistent than the difference between the audience and the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, let me just say. Anyways, you know where this is all leading. The reason all of you probably fell in love with the early works of M. Night Shyamalan happens to be The Sixth Sense. Let's relive just a little bit. You know the accident up there? Yeah. Someone got hurt. They did? A lady. She broke her neck. Oh my god, but you can see her? Yes. Where is she? Standing next to my window. My god. Now, hold on. If there's Zoomers in the audience, I just want every single one of you Zoomers to know, okay? This was 1999, alright? This was an incredible year for cinema. We got things like The Matrix and Fight Club, and we got The Sixth Sense. It's, it's unreal how many good movies came out right before the turn of the millennium. And we were all very innocent back then. This was a, this was a pre-9-11 world. Shaking. Cole, what's wrong? Did you ever talk to your mom about how things are? I don't tell her things. Why not? Because she doesn't look at me like everybody else, and I don't want her to. I don't want her to know. Know what? I see dead people walking around like regular people. I don't see anything. Are you sure they're there? Sometimes you feel it inside, like you're falling down real fast. This trailer makes it look so much worse than it is! This is a genuinely good movie. Haley Joel Osmond is uh, like a national treasure in this film. It still kind of holds up. It's one of those movies where, and I'm sorry, uh, spoiler warnings now for The Sixth Sense. If you have not seen The Sixth Sense uh, that came out in 1999, uh-oh, it's about to be spoiled for you. Uh, it turns out Bruce Willis is in fact dead the entire time. And that is a, a twist, uh, the likes of which very few people, and if you're in the audience right now, if you're watching me and you're like, oh no, I knew, I knew the whole time. No, you didn't. No, everyone, I, I genuinely believe every single person who was like, I, I knew, I knew all along. It's, it's very obvious, okay, there's, there's a lot of clues, color red, door handles, got the red on it, you understand, I, I knew, I knew the whole, no you didn't, none of you did. I, I don't believe it for a second, okay? Uh, it, like, it just comes out of the blue, you watch the whole film thinking that Bruce Willis is in fact this child psychologist who's helping out this kid who thinks he sees dead people, and then it turns out he actually does really see dead people, uh, and then Bruce Willis, uh, it turns out he was dead the whole time, but he managed to help the kid get some solace, got that heartwarming ending, it's just the right tones, okay? It's got the mix of the creepy, uh, it's got the mix of the surprising, it's got really good drama, it was uh, incredibly acted by Haley Joel Osment at a time when, I'm sorry, child actors, uh, y'all are shit. Just for the most part, child actors, they distract me so much in movies. So much. I can't tell you the amount of movies that have been ruined by me sitting there, and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, two adults are, are talking, and they're like, I can't believe that he came and he was trying to kill you. And then all of a sudden someone walks in, I want milk! And you're just like, oh, God. Yeah, and that, but I get it. You're, you're not supposed to be amazing actors. I mean, you're kids. You're supposed to be kids. You're supposed to do kid shit. Whereas Haley Joe Osment, it, it was just like, holy fuck. Wow. Uh, you're just an incredible actor. Uh, yeah, he was he was nominated for an Oscar for this role. I think that's the, the youngest nomination anyone's ever gotten in, in history. Maybe I'm not I'm not entirely sure. But anyways, great film. It's an absolute classic. I'm sure you all remember it. I see dead people became part of the public consciousness, and it solidified M Night Shyamalan as an actor. Uh, sorry, as a director, a writer director. Uh, one one of those. Well, actually, as an actor as well. He acts in all his films. A writer, actor, director, triple threat. Okay? You don't see a lot of those. You don't see a lot of those come along, especially ones that are willing to do, again, original storytelling. Original storytelling. That's that's another thing you don't see. So, we fast forward from The Sixth Sense into Unbreakable, which, it turns out, is also an awesome movie. 
It was a great movie. Once again, he teams up with Bruce Willis, and this time it's all about comic books and comic book history, and, and it also has a huge twist. It's got a massive twist ending, but it's really good. It's a, it's a really good film. It's It still holds up today. I, I mean, uh, just just as an independent film, sorry, not independent, as in, this had a lot of money behind it. I just, I just mean as an, an isolated film on its own. Still really good. You're in the emergency room in the Philadelphia City Hospital. Oh, I won't spoil this one. Don't worry. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Where were you sitting on the train? Against the window. In the passenger car? Yes. Turns out, yeah, Bruce Willis is also dead in this one. Every one of his films says Bruce Willis you being a dead guy. Car. the other passengers your train derailed took a curve too fast a second train collided with yours after it derailed the debris spread over one mile why are you looking at me like that it's a couple of years later. This one comes out in 2000. It's already a better trailer style than the Sixth Sense. That, like, that trailer for the Sixth Sense was ruining the Sixth Sense, okay? This is a better trailer style. Just a little a little creepier, you know, a little bit more into modern uh, cinematic trailers uh, before we enter the blah part of trailers. There are two reasons why I'm looking at you like this. All of the above, Kubi. One, because it seems you are the only survivor of this train wreck. And two... You don't have a scratch on you. Ooh. I know what's going through your mind right now. You're searching for meaning in all of this. No one thing. 131 people died so you could finally understand the destiny for which you were born. Are you ready for the truth? Wow, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because, A, you know, this game in now we're kind of in the post-Matrix era, so we just want more films that are going to be like really trippy and, and just blow our minds kind of stuff. Now, I was hoping this would have it, but it didn't. I was thinking an M. Night Shyamalan film was going to also be in the trailer because he's writing the success of uh, that last film. And uh, things were just so unbelievably like... You don't really have these directors who just come out of nowhere with such an amazing film. And then if they follow it up with another good one, and I know people in the chat are like, well, this one doesn't really hold up. Fair enough, I have not watched it recently. I don't know if it has fallen apart. Because this one, like The Sixth Sense, uh, once you realize the whole thing is a twist, uh, you can watch it that second time, which is also very good, because you didn't watch it feeling clever, because you're like, oh, I get it now, Bruce Willis wasn't actually having dinner with his wife, his wife was just there alone, but Bruce Willis getting the pain to check, but I, oh, I'm a fool, you're smart, you're smarter than me, M. Night, you, you got me on this one. So around this time, uh, this movie comes out, I, I saw this in theaters, and again, it was blown away, and at this point, M. Night Shyamalan is just effectively the new person to look out for, right? He's the Christopher Nolan of the early aughts, where you're just like, any movie that comes out by M. Night Shyamalan is going to be spectacular. And of course, this one gets followed up with... Signs. Mel Gibson. Aliens. Water. <laughs> What can make geometric shapes the size of a football field? Oh, and Walking Phoenix! Totally forgot about that! A young baby Walking Phoenix! Wow! What kind of machine can bend a stock of corn over without breaking it? Can't be by hand, it's too perfect. So the aliens can't read our minds? And, and one of the Malkins? I, I, I can't remember which one. Oh. Some animals around the county have been acting funny. Some of them violent. It's almost like they act when they smell a predator around. Amman, Nairobi, Bangalore, and Jerusalem as the Same latest. Same shows on every station. Mm -hmm. Every station. It is the 18th reported crop sign in that country in the last 72 hours. 
I'm a little scared. All this stuff on TV. Joe Gills was in here talking about the end of the world. They're staying in the shadows. It's called probing to make sure things are all clear. Oh, clear for what? For penetration. For the rest of them. There's a monster outside my room. Can I have a glass of water? Kind of sounds like X Files. Are being assembled. It's happening. Don't be afraid. It's like War of the Worlds. I believe it's going to pass. Don't be afraid. They're in the house. Here it comes. Don't be afraid. Oh, it's an M Night Shyamalan's film. He's on the map. See. And now it's gotten to the point where just his name alone, it's like seeing, and again, he was rumored to be the next Spielberg, seeing like a Steven Spielberg film. That is a, like a banner all of a sudden, like, whoa, I was excited before, but bro, bro, this is M. Night. Oh, what's the twist? What, are we all aliens? What's going on here? Uh, who's the alien? What's going to happen? And I was excited. I was so excited. I went to go see signs in theaters, in taters with my friends and... It was indeed very spooky, especially as someone who thought the initial premise and the, and the way everything was playing out was kind of, I don't know, weird and a little bit silly, but still, but still I bought in all, all the way up until the ending. And there was a twist, and I'm, again, going to have to do spoiler warnings for, for Signs, so if you haven't seen Signs, I'm about to, about to spoil the twist in Signs, but the ending was fucking stupid. It, 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 it was a twist. But it was a twist that genuinely left me very confused as to how this new visionary, this auteur, this Spielberg, if you will, decided to make an entire film where aliens, like, blow away the Fermi paradox, find out interstitial, uh, international, sorry, international travel, interspatial travel, interdimensional travel, make all the way to Earth, they land, they do a bunch of weird alien stuff because instead of, you know, trying to communicate or anything, they kind of hide around barns and make creepy noise and all that kind of stuff. And they're going to take over the planet. But they're foiled because their one weakness is water. That's it. So the, the daughter in the movie is, is always holding like a glass of water at all times, always is always holding a glass because she just loves water and she leaves all these other glasses of water around. So you'll see like maybe 40 or 50 cups of water. They're just they're just all over the place. There's a ton of fucking water because just finish. Just finish the fucking cup. I don't understand. Well, why do you start the cup? Like it's so much wasted water. Your dad tells you multiple times and you don't listen. Mel Gibson is very clear on this. There's wasted water. But anyways, uh, that the water ends up scaring the alien and then they realize the aliens are, are going to be scared of water, which I don't know. Just me. Uh, I think, and this is not, a, I'm not a man of science. I don't really understand how a lot of these things work. But uh, if you've managed to be able to travel uh, through dimensions, for example, I, I would assume you could scan and find out what the most abundant resource on a planet is before you land on said planet. Because if the one thing that kills you happens to be water, well, then maybe you should scan what is fucking abundant in the atmosphere of the planet. There's water particles fucking everywhere. Like, in every scene of that movie, the aliens would have been like, Oh, God, water! Water! Where can I escape water? Well, not not in many places on this planet. There's, there's water in most parts of the world. Maybe in some caves. Even some caves that don't have any exposure to the outside world, don't have any moisture that comes in there, you might be able to... But fucking water? Water? Like, it, is, hopefully it doesn't rain while you're conquering Earth. Because that, that'll, that'll be a short exposition. And they don't wear, like, I don't know, some kind of waterproof power suits or anything, despite the fact that they can do, again, some pretty some pretty gnarly science stuff. But still, it was fun. It was fun. It was, it was, it was a fun time. I left it being like, well, that's ridiculous. But it was fun. Had a good time. I, I'm still on Team, team M Night. I, I'm ready for the next one. What, what, what's coming out next? Get me excited. Oh, the village. Oh, nice. Tell me more. We have always had, since the day we settled here, a gentle understanding with the creatures who live beyond our borders. 
The novel the space on is actually really good, I believe into it. their woods. They do not come into our village. I have always pictured them in some ways as our protectors. They have allowed us to live here. Nestled amongst them in this untouched place. Untouched. By the markings we find this morning on our homes. Oh. I feel they were warning us. may question ourselves at moments such as these. Did we make the right decision to settle here? I fear our days of peace are over. Oh, welcome Phoenix again. Sign me up. I like a little religious horror. Why not? Let's see it. Oh, no way! M Knight! Take my money. Take my money. Come on. He's, he's, he's like, he's like three, three and a half, two and a half for three at this point. This whole movie was stupid. I'm sorry. I like I again went went to go buy tickets, bought it, went went to see it in theaters. It was it was it was unbelievably stupid. And at this point, like M Night Shyamalan's films, they're they're becoming pretty noteworthy for how they all have the same format. You, you spend the first like hour being scared or creeped out, and then the last fifteen minutes going, oh no way. Oh, that is so clever. How did you think of this? I, I never would have thought of it. Ooh, I, I, I want to watch this one again. Because I can watch it again knowing the whole thing was a fugazi. It was all a trick. And and then I can enjoy it a second time. So so I'll double that box office revenue. Because cause they're clever. But yeah, I, I'm not going to ruin this ending. Because I don't know if it's even worth it to do so. Just suffice to say, the whole movie, it wasn't scary, first off. Which... I mean, if you're watching a movie that's supposed to be really scary, that's a problem. Uh, and it just was like, what? Oh, well. All right, that's fine. That's fine. You know what? You can have one bad movie. All right? You had two two good movies and then almost another really good third movie. So so you started out so incredibly strong. Again, the new Spielberg. You, you can do that. That's fine. What's coming up next, M. Night? Lady in the Water. Interesting. And Lady in the Water, it turns out is not a scary movie. It's it's a children's fable. Uh, it's it's a it's a kid's story that uh, M Knight had thought of for for a while where he now instead of just having a small guest appearance is a prominent character in the film. It's a bit of a stretch. He does have to he does have to kind of like leave his element because he plays a writer. And uh, he plays a writer that that is manifesting things in, into the real world. Uh, there's there's a lady in the water, uh, one might say, and uh, you know there's there's all of that, and uh, yeah. I don't know who you are, but you did something to me. My thoughts. If everything became clearer. The fears that were muddling my thoughts just went away. I can hear myself. Do you wish to know your future? Now, it's not like a horrifyingly bad movie. Like, you know some movies that are just so bad that they're actually ironically amazing and hilarious? It's not that. It's, it's, it's not just like you know, devoid of any redeemable aspects. It's kind of just like a pretty banal story. It's really, really boring. Paul Giamatti's in it, so does that. I mean, the only really redeeming scene in the whole thing is just how telling the death scene is of a character in the film who is the, I guess, the closest you can get to an antagonist. 
and you'll never guess this part. He's a film critic. It's it's a film critic. So he, he's a writer, and the bad guy and the bad guy is a film critic. So at this point, it could be because M Night's films aren't getting quite the same reception they were before. Signs was kind of like everyone loved it, but the ending was kind of silly, and then the village. Not everyone liked it and got a lot of bad reviews, but but now he does this. He does a totally separate kind of project. I will now show you the death scene, so uh, you're just fully aware of what we're dealing with here. Hello. And I guess yeah, spoiler warning for the movie you're never going to watch because none of you are ever going to watch it for good reason. So yeah, uh, Lady in the Water. Spoiler alert. Is the bathroom on this level working? A dog inside the building. Go! Shoot! Well, you're not a dog at all. Oh my god. This is like a moment from a horror movie. <laughs> Precisely the moment where the mutation or beast will attempt to kill an unlikable side character. <laughs> but in stories where there has been no prior cursing, nudity, killing, or death, such as in a family film, the unlikable character will narrowly escape his encounter and be referenced again later in the story, having learned valuable lessons. He may even be given a humorous moment to allow the audience to feel good about it. <laughs> Now, I know the word meta has no meaning anymore, thanks to uh, Zucky, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, but you can tell, he's just trying to be a little bit meta here, you know? He's kind of like, hey, everyone, he's, he's acknowledging things that are kind of, you know, tropes and movies, and he's saying them out loud because he's a critic, and I kind of really fucking hate my critics at this point, so, yeah, let's see. Let's see you uh, critique your way out of this one, son. This is where I turn to run. You will leap for me. I will shut the door, and you will land a fraction of a second too late. Yes! That's what I do to my critics. Every single one of them. I devour them in Roblox, of course. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, well, there we go. Another addition to my catalog. We're doing all right. Turns out the, the movie is pretty universally uh, ridiculed. It's probably a movie you've heard of but never watched. You probably found it in some kind of bin. And at this point, it's it's weird. I, I remember being like, this is this is bizarre. How does someone start out the way M. Night did? Making these like these classic films, incredible movies that are gonna stand the test of time. And on top of that, just get progressively worse. And it's it's kind of like you can track it because like signs is Okay, it, it just has like a really silly ending and, and then the village is not like horrible But it's just not good and then Lady in the Water is also not like the worst movie ever But it's also not good, you know that I mean There's, there's gonna be there's just gotta be a way to, to salvage all this And that's what brings me to The Happening Are we supposed to stop here? What's going on? You can't just leave us here. <laughs> we lost contact. Okay, let me just start by saying this movie has probably some of the most fantastic acting by Mark Wahlberg that he's ever done in any movie ever. Uh, it is is it is just always pitch wrong, just tonally wrong for the scene. As if when you started filming, he delivered the lines normally. He was like. What are you doing here? What am I supposed to do here? And then all of a sudden, M. Night was like, no, 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 no. Say it the opposite is how it should be said. And he's like, wait, what? Just go for it. And he's like, what am I supposed to be doing here? What? No. And it was like, yes, that's what I'm looking for. And he's like, really? That's really fucked up. Just, I, is, is this not going to be, 
Isn't everyone who's going to watch this really scary movie think it's really weird that I talk like that the whole time? No. No, puppet. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. You've done it again, Marky Mark. And I'll show you the scene because I know you all want to see the scene. But basically, the plot of this one is there's something. We don't know what, but there's something in the air that's making everyone uh, try and commit suicide. That's, that's the plot. Contact. With whom? With whom? Everyone. Okay, but at this point, you know, had a couple stumbles, obviously, but still, it's still like the top billion. It's still the first thing you see as soon as you see that. Oh, okay, this is an M. Night Shyamalan film. It could be good. I mean, he's, he's due. I feel like he's due. There's, I don't know what's been happening with this whole descent thing, but he's, this one could be all right. There appears to be an event happening. Oh, I remember it's the some sense. kind of attack. Science was, science was pretty good too. I remember that one. The first stage is loss of speech. Claire. Claire? The second stage is physical disorientation. The third stage is fatal. Whoa. I'm scared. Okay. okay. The attacks are spreading. Boston, Philadelphia. John Leguizamo as well. The country. Authorities are now feeling that a terrorist group being responsible is becoming less and less likely. She says every Now, I'm not going to lie. You should watch The Happening. You should watch The Happening. And this time, this is the first one that has hit that level of being unironically hilarious. This film is very, very funny. It did not intend to be. It's an unintentional comedy, but it's a really funny one nonetheless. Especially because as like the whole thing gets explained, you're like, that's so fucking convoluted. That is so un- Okay, all right. Oh, and here's Mark Wahlberg doing another weird thing. What? what? No. It's funny. Look, I don't know if you guys have heard about this article in the New York Times about honeybees vanishing. Well, apparently honeybees are disappearing all over the country. Tens of millions of them just disappearing. There's no bodies, no sign of them. They're just mysteriously gone. Now, this is already starting to give you a very good look into the process behind M. Night. I want to posit that I think he writes his scripts and then wants to be interesting in parts of them. So he'll look up either news articles or at this point, Google something and then spit it out as a fact. And then when you hear the fact in the movie, you're like, oh, neat. I learned something. I'm clever because I started noticing that as a pattern in several other films afterwards. This is scary, huh? All right, let's hear some theories about why this might be happening. Nothing? Come on, guys. Laura. Disease? Why did you cast Mark Wahlberg as the teacher? It is such a weird casting the choice, even at this stage. This is, this is not the part he was born to play. Right. Could be a virus or infection. But it's all over the country. It's a coordinated event in 24 states. It's a little tricky. Pollution? Could be. I mean, we're just pumping so much junk into... Cheeto. I feel, genuinely at my heart of hearts, that was a post hoc rationalization to what people were saying about this movie, both before it even came out and afterwards. I think afterwards it was like, well, the whole thing is intended to be a uh, farcical, humorous look into, like, that, no, you were trying to make your next big, amazing, scary film with a twist. To the environment, they're just keeling over, but there are no bodies. Keep guessing. Dylan. Global warming. Temperature goes up a fraction of a degree, makes them disoriented. Maybe. Jake? You don't have an opinion? You're not interested in what happened to the bees. He's too cool. You should be more interested in science, Jake. You know why? Because your face is perfect. The problem is, your face is perfect at 15. Now, if you were interested in science, you would know facts like the human nose and ears grow. What? What? What did... Teacher? What did you just say? This is the start of the movie, by the way. It's one of the first scenes. And then right away, you're like... This is not going to be the next Sixth Sense, is it? I was, I was sold on this being the next Sixth Sense and the next Signs. Doesn't really feel like it's going that way. A fraction of an inch each year? So a perfect balance of features now might not look so perfect five years from now. It might look downright whack ten years from now. 
So that's the cool teacher being like, you know what, kid? You're hot, but you're hot now, and you're going to be ugly as fuck in five years. So pay attention. Come on, buddy. Take an interest in science. What could be a reason the bees have vanished? An act of nature and will never fully understand it. Nice answer, Jake. <laughs> again. Like, what is this writing? An act of, like, you could just see him typing this out. And now, this will be profound. An act of nature and no one can understand it. That's right, Jake. That's what I expected you to say, but I didn't know you People would. Setting off the plants? What are you saying? That guy was crazy. We have to save them. They're already dead. What if they're targeting us as threats? I mean, this part of the field may not have been set off. What if they're targeting us? Something you know? in this field could be releasing the chemical into the air when there's too many of us together. No. Let's just stay ahead of the wind. Yeah. But then. For the first time in horror cinematic history, the wind is the scary thing and the monster. Whoa. The wind. Whoa. Let's just break up into groups. <laughs> spread apart, everyone. There's wind everywhere. Oh, God, it's on my clothes. It's, I can smell it. Whoa, look at that. Look at that early aught CG. Oh yeah, run. You can't outrun the wind, baby. The wind's gonna get you. Oh, this doesn't even need this is oh man, this is practical effects. You can just tell. This is just them with a bunch of fans. And he's like, yeah, yeah, and people are gonna be horrified in the daytime as they see the wind. The wind is coming for them. Yeah, I know, they're creating wind. They don't realize that they're actually creating wind as they run. Here it comes! Oh no! Never let go! Don't look at the wind! It can't hurt you! Whoa. The wind all around. Didn't have to be like this, you know? We could have... Could have gone behind a, a fence or a building or gone indoors. Didn't, didn't have to just be out in the open, but... Yeah, Roman Bear, that was a good parody. So I think you now understand that M. Night is kind of um, full of himself. Like, at this point. Like, maybe the problem wasn't M. Night all along. Okay? Maybe maybe I'm getting this whole thing wrong. Maybe it was us. Maybe it was us. Because we fed into this. We helped this feedback loop. After those first two, uh, in first three, I'll, I'll give them signs, alright? After those first three movies, we were like... This is the new visionary for Hollywood, okay? If you were into esoteric films, indie films, or whatever, you, you probably didn't give a shit. But back then, you know, Hollywood blockbusters were already starting to go the way of uh, movies that are sequels, prequels, uh, everything's a comic book movie kind of shit. And around then, we got this original person who's making these high-budget films. Uh, and But the, 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 you know, the trajectory is so very clear at this point. Each one is progressively multitudes worse than the one that preceded it. And, and by the time we get to The Happening, it's gone so far off the deep end that it's like it's funny now like you're so bad that you've made a comedy an unintentional comedy and it's it's hilarious it, it really is a funny film i mean I'll, I'll leave you with this last moment i hear you whispering planning on stealing something no ma'am we're not plan on murdering me in my sleep what no <laughs> I hear you whispering. <laughs> Planning on stealing something. No, ma'am, we're not. Plan on murdering me in my sleep. What? No. <laughs> so you get it. You get it. Uh, and at this point, I mean, it's kind of like, oh, well, you know how the kids today say, you fell off? Well, at this point, myself and other people who love the movies, we're all thinking the same thing. M. Night fell off. That's it. It's, 
it's it's irredeemable. M Night has just gone the way of like so many filmmakers who just got too much media attention. We're given so much feedback in the terms of like you are the next Spielberg, you are a visionary, you are a god, and then that went to their ego, and then their ego inflated to such a degree that it destroyed their ability to make movies uh, because they just come off so silly and convoluted, and they can't re like even recognize that, you know. But then, but then something else happened. Then he decided to do an adaptation, an adaptation of a very beloved, very beloved piece. We gotta do it. We gotta. I mean, if, if you don't, if you look away, you give it power. You make it more powerful by ignoring it. You have, don't look away. None of you can look away. You must, you must witness this as I have. Oh, M. Night is back! Big effects! You are the last of your kind. All that remains of a once powerful nation. Your destinies are tied, Zuko. Me wrong i mean these effects look pretty cool uh you know i'm not not a big fan of it but you know elements uh, things happening we started a rebellion he will need you Every stream I find a new way to hurt you. That's what we're here for. Come on. And again, if you if you look away, you give it power. You, you have to look at it. We all need him. All right. The last airbender. I get it. I, I get it. Okay. I, I, I can't imagine what it would have been like if one of my childhood, uh, like one of the things I adored the most was turned into a film that was as bad as this movie is. I did end up watching this movie. And it made me never want to watch The Last Airbender. Because I was like, this whole thing seems like silly nonsense. I don't want to participate in this. And why is why is this happening? And this is all so convoluted and this and that. And it's all kind of on the, the effects, as cool as they looked in the trailer, they're all just really weird and, and just kind of fake looking. I don't know. It's it, it's really bad. You know? Didn't you watch the Dragon Ball movie? I did. It's terrible. But uh, the, the example I was going to give was Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Because I actually really did like Mortal Kombat, the original movie, and I really liked the Mortal Kombat lore, and I was actually really excited that they were going to do Annihilation, because I was like, you know, they're putting all the characters that I've been wanting to see from Mortal Kombat 2 and 3 in this one. Maybe we're going to get some, going to get some Cyrax action and, and some Striker and some, you know, Baraka. This is going to be a ton of fun. And, and the movie is so, so bad. Um, it really, I think I'm one of the few people who saw that in theaters, by the way. I didn't walk out. I watched the whole thing. But I, I definitely was like, you know, what the hell was that? I was watching it. But anyways, Last Airbender, I understand. I get it. I know why you're all super sad about it. And I uh, I, I think that's fair. At this point, I, I think it's pretty, pretty conclusive that M. Night Shyamalan has fallen off the map. He's lost the plot. He's remaking uh, beloved properties and doing a terrible job squandering millions and millions of dollars in the process. It kind of feels like you only get so many failures in Hollywood too, right? You can't keep making bad movies and make movies that are also commercially unsuccess unsuccessful. You can make bad movies if they make lots of money. Then you can make bad movies forever, all right? Uh, that's, that's, that's not a problem. But if you make bad movies and they're critically and commercially unsuccessful, then you're not going to get that next big budget film. People aren't just going to throw money at you, you know? They're, they're not going to be like, here's, here's a whole bunch of money to make this next giant epic, to say the least. Completely unrelated, but here's another movie we should talk about. This will come down to who can deliver the lower propensity yeah. and mid propensity voters.
to our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just. We will build a ladder to heaven to deliver you the daily news. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are your most humble of clownish jesters. To our lords, Trevor R. and Alexander Thaler, you have our undying fealty. To our knights of the round table, Nate, that one guy, Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariana McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Ants are still running the world, Coulter Smith, Tom Grow, Val 9000, Jenna Tal, Quiet 185, Anna Loves Riley, Riley and Anna, Omni, Poodle Hawk. The Tim Caucus, Multimondi, Trevor Janice, Lemmy 101, Anthropophojack, Saren 42, Chronic to Hemp Hog, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Josh Mickelson, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We shall meet you in the tavern, and we raise a drink, and we salute you. 